The Man with the Yin Yang Eyes, Episode 6. Lucius Gregory is a name that is too familiar to you. There is no need to explain it, right? After a series of recent events, I gained more knowledge about the underworld. That day, on a free occasion, I went to a suburb to see the sights, relax, and digest what had happened. I was walking around while thinking about some plans for the future, and suddenly came to a lake at an unexpected time. This lake is called Shining Lake, because it is located in the suburbs and is not managed by anyone, so it is usually the place where the kids gather to bathe when it's hot. When I unconsciously walked to the lake, I saw children playing with the water. The kids playing were around 11 or 12 years old, they probably lived nearby. Every day I wear a pair of black glasses over my eyes, so the world around me is always not very colorful. After many times opening my glasses and looking at those things, I also got used to my eyes, so I no longer hesitated or hesitated when I wanted to take off my glasses like the first time. At that moment, I wanted to take off my glasses and enjoy the beautiful surroundings. But it's destiny. As soon as I took off my glasses, I saw something I shouldn't want to see again. Near the place where the children were playing, half a head was sticking out. I didn't see it before, I opened my glasses to see it, with all its looks it definitely wasn't human. I rated it a while and guessed that it was a drowned ghost, because earlier a person drowns in the lake. I have heard Mr. Simmons talk about it. The drowned ghost drowned and could not recite the escape spell, forcing it to choose a replacement, then it can be reincarnated. The drowned ghost silently stared at the playing children. Perhaps it has already chosen its target among those children. Then I saw him smile evilly and dive into the water, no doubt trying to pull someone's leg by now to make him his replacement. Hey kids, hurry up to the shore, stop playing in the water. Underwater is dangerous. I was afraid that it would harm the children, so while I was in a hurry and didn't know what to do, I yelled at them and told them to hurry up to the shore. But those kids didn't take my words seriously, they grinned and thought I was joking with them. I don't know how to swim, so I don't dare to jump into the water, but if that's the case, the drowned ghost will catch them. I looked around, and an idea popped into my head. I bent down to pick up a few stones from the ground. Then I reached out, grabbed the stones, and threw them into the water, right where the children were playing. I don't want to, but there's no other way. I just thought of a way to let the kids get on the shore and get out of this dangerous place as soon as possible. Yes, this works. Those kids aggressively looked at me with wide, ferocious eyes filled with confusion. After a few rounds of throwing stones from me, they finally came ashore. What a psychopath. After the kids got ashore and walked a bit, one of them came back and scolded me. Oh, it's okay to scold, as long as they all get ashore, it'll be fine. I watched the kids until they were gone, then I tilted my head slightly back and looked into the water. I saw the drowned ghost just now raising its head and staring at me with angry eyes. It looked like it wanted to rush to kill me. After glaring at me for a moment, it slowly sank to the bottom and then disappeared. The water was calm again as if nothing had happened. Later that day, I told this story to Mr. Simmons. Mr. Simmons said that if he had caught one of the children that day, he could have been reincarnated but I destroyed the thing within his reach. Mr. Simmons praised me for choosing to save lives, not ignore them. I still think about that drowned ghost's terrifying gaze. After that day, I still had a few days off, so I decided to go to a hot tub to relieve the pressure. I usually go to the hot springs early in the morning, because there are very few people at that time, I can comfortably soak in the water and take a relaxing nap. The hot pool was evaporating, and I should have felt very warm. But suddenly, for some reason, I felt a sudden chill rising from below. 
This chill made it impossible for me to fall asleep. I looked around the lake, hot steam still rising, nothing out of the ordinary. Ouch! The water was also warm again. As I was about to close my eyes and relax a little longer, suddenly, I felt my ankle being grabbed by something with great force and pulled me under the water. I fell into a completely passive position, because I was so surprised that I didn't have time to prepare anything. I was dragged along by that pull and sank to the bottom of the pool. I felt something pull me into the water. I tried to open my eyes wide to see. The temperature under the water is more than 40 degrees now. It hurts my eyes quite a bit. As soon as I opened my eyes, I saw the drowned ghost I met yesterday at Shining Lake. It's grabbing my ankle. I couldn't believe it would appear here. While I was still stunned with horror, my eyes saw it let go of my ankle and jump up to grab me. The drowned ghost strangled me and seemed to want to make me his replacement. I drank a lot of water. I tried to struggle, and in the end, I kicked hard in the bottom of the pool and leaned over the surface of the water. I was scared to death. I sucked in the air to catch my breath, then constantly looked around and then looked down below the lake, not knowing if the other drowned ghost was still there or not. But the water now is very clear, even the bottom of the pool can be seen. There was nothing underneath, the drowned ghost from earlier had disappeared without a trace. After the incident earlier, I was pretty scared and quickly went to the hot pool, swiftly dressed and left. As soon as I went out, I took out my phone to call Mr. Simmons and talk about the trouble I just ran into. Unfortunately for me, Mr. Simmons was not at home right now, so it took a few days for him to return. I expressed my fear to Mr. Simmons and asked him to think of a way to help. Mr. Simmons said that when I helped the children, I let the drowned ghost see my eyes that it was able to follow me, to wait to take me away. Mr. Simmons said he couldn't go home right away but could teach me how to get it out, and he told me to listen carefully. I listened to Mr. Simmons teach, go to a store, buy a nylon fabric, take it home, and then used nails to secure it to my room ceiling. Mr. Simmons asked me to nail the canvas to the entire ceiling, leaving nothing blank. I followed Mr. Simmons. When it was all over, I stood staring at the ceiling for a while. I don't know the purpose of this, but as Mr. Simmons had told me, it must have been used against the dreaded drowned ghost. At night, I turn on the night light, then go to bed. But because of fear, I couldn't sleep. I kept staring at the fabric above the ceiling. But I stared for a long time and didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Then suddenly, sleep came, and I fell asleep when I didn't even know it. I fell asleep for a while and fell into a deep sleep. Then suddenly, I was somewhat conscious and vaguely heard the sound of running water inside my house. The sound of water dripping made me uncomfortable. The sound seemed to be coming from above the ceiling, but even in a dream, I thought that the house where I lived all year round had never leaked water, which was strange. I tried to clear my mind and tried to open my eyes to see what was going on. But my eyelids were so heavy, it seemed like something was deliberately blocking me from opening them. I tried so hard and used a lot of strength to be able to open my eyes. As soon as my eyes opened, I saw some water seeping from the cloth on the ceiling. I remember what is happening to me. I wanted to get up, but my body was like being fixed on the bed, I couldn't move no matter how hard I tried. I persisted in lifting my body up, but I couldn't. I fear to think that I must be under the pressure of the drowned ghost to hold me to the bed so that I cannot move. The water flowed more and more, not as rusty as before. The fabric on the ceiling quickly accumulates a lot of water and sinks this day deep down. I couldn't move, couldn't do anything, and I couldn't even struggle with all my might. 
I could only narrow my eyes in panic and stare at the fabric on the ceiling and the growing puddle of water. This feeling makes me both uncomfortable and scared, it is indescribable. I'm really helpless, don't know what to do. I'm not sure how Mr. Simmons showed me if I could stop this drowned ghost. Above the ceiling, where the cloth had accumulated more and more water and gradually gathered into something shape, like a face. And just as I guessed, the water on the other cloth accumulated into a face, the angry face of the drowned ghost. That drowned ghost seemed to want to tear the cloth and lunge at me. And the water keeps flowing down the center of the fabric and accumulates more and more. The cloth sunk lower, and the drowned ghost drew closer and closer to me. I can't move, I think if that drowned ghost comes down to me and captures me, then I have only a way to die but no way to avoid it. While I was scared, I even thought about what the other world would be like, when I went there. Suddenly, a ray of sunlight came through the window, interrupting my wandering thoughts. The sunlight came in, and miraculously I was able to move. I tossed and turned for a while then tried to sit up. My heart was pounding, and I couldn't stop breathing fast. After stabilizing my heart rate and breathing a bit, I raised my head and looked up at the ceiling. I don't know if the drowned ghost is still on it or not. My heart fluttered again, and I was scared quite a bit, but when I looked up, there was nothing above. Only the cloth is fixed with a blank nail on it. There is no running water, nor are there any ghosts above. At this point, my floating heart can finally lower back to normal. I let out a sigh and felt a lot lighter than when I first got up. Lucky. Thanks to the method Mr. Simmons taught me how to protect myself from that dreaded drowned ghost. If there is not, I must have been taken by the ghost this time as a substitute and went to the afterlife. I am more grateful to Mr. Simmons. But things don't stop there. Mr. Simmons also told me to do something else. I got up, went to the bathroom to do personal hygiene, changed clothes, and left the house to go to the market. Mr. Simmons told me to go to the market to buy a big rooster when I was done at home. Mr. Simmons said that the drowned ghost had only four chances to capture a replacement, but it had already been spoiled by me three, with only one left to go. If it doesn't catch anyone this time, it will disappear forever and can't harm anyone anymore. If the drowned ghost doesn't disappear, it will certainly try to kill me, but if I ruin its last chance and make it disappear forever, I will be guilty. That's why Mr. Simmons taught me a mutually beneficial way. Mr. Simmons told me to go to the market to buy a big rooster and put blood on the chicken's head. The chicken's soul is like a human, so it can help the drowned ghost reincarnate. In this way, the drowned ghost won't have to disappear, and I won't be harmed by it. I strongly believe in Mr. Simmons, I have dripped blood on the chicken's head and hurled it into the water. The chicken has dense feathers, so it can easily float on the water for a long time. While the chicken was kicking around, a hand slowly popped up in the water. That hand reached out and grabbed the chicken and yanked it deep beneath the water. I stood on the shore and was quite shocked to see the drowned ghost grab the chicken with my own eyes. So I'm safe now, no more worries. I am delighted that I know a master like Mr. Simmons, who helps me solve my problems and avoid lurking dangers. One rooster changed my life, saved my life. From now on, I can never eat chicken again. As for my eyes, I might have to be a little more careful next time.